Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing with another um, tech video, sort of. This one's actually about Swirl. Before I begin this video, I wanna uh, say something just so it kinda gets it out of the way. I'm gonna give you information. What you do with that information is totally up to you. I am not a god, a guru, or whatever else. I don't pretend to be better than anything else. I'm just giving you information. I want you to understand that because uh, I want you to take whatever I've learned, and maybe you've heard something contradictory on the internet, take whatever you've heard there, and take whatever you hear from anybody else, and then form your own opinion, what you believe works, or go test it and figure it out for yourself. Um, I have been wrong, and I probably will be wrong again in the future. And uh, so don't take anything I say as absolute. In other words, what I'm trying to say, I'm just giving you information. It's for you to do what you want with it. But it's best to take a whole bunch of information and form your own opinions. So I'm gonna give you some of mine today is what I'm trying to say. You might say, why'd you even give that, uh, that intro like that? Well, part of it's this. I don't want my YouTube channel to turn into what Facebook is where people just comment and say stuff even though they have really less knowledge or they always have to try proving themselves right. And if you end up being that person, I'll probably delete you from my channel so you can't see it again. It's not to be cruel, it's just I don't want my channel turning into what Facebook has become. Um, I just want to get that out first. So we'll start. So anyway, um, the, today's video is really about Swirl. And before I really can get to that, I need to talk about you know the engine really in general and cylinder head porting and things that go with it. For one, there are a lot of factors that come together to make horsepower for an engine. A lot of them. So in a cylinder head, there's so many that go together. And here's the thing. A lot of those factors um, might mess up or play a fat play a part in some other factor. What I mean by that is you could take, say for instance, flow. Um, if you look at flow, if you make the port bigger, if you do it right, it should flow more. Well, if you look at that, see how flow is kind of related to size. So you could say, well, the engine needs so much flow, but it also needs a certain amount of size. See how they're kind of interchangeable. I only mention that because it, everything you do on the head affects something else. And really what you're doing is making compromises in one way or another, because that does play a part of what I believe affects with swirl. Um, now, I always give you um, flow bench numbers and people think that I only care about um, airflow in general. Not really, because like I said at the beginning, all of this just gives me information. Everything that this flow bench tells me just tells me information, but you got, it's how you use that information that makes it more valuable. You just can't take any one thing as that's all that there is. For instance, even though this tells me flow, this flow bench does, I know it's static, which means it's just pulling air randomly. It doesn't have a valve that's going back and forth in a dynamic situation that an engine does. And I have to understand that, I have to take that into account. But I do think the flow from this has some information I think is valuable for an actual running engine. You just have to be aware of that. Plus you have sizes, the velocities in the port and a whole bunch of other stuff. So everything kind of affects itself. That's what I'm, I wanna to get to that too. So. What a swirl is, because maybe you haven't watched my other uh, videos, what this is, is there's a device right down below here, and the air comes into the port, it goes through this floor, and at the bottom where this plate is, there's actually like a, a blade. And as the air comes through the port, it will turn the blade. And that blade RPM will be registered, and you'll be able to tell how much actual turn, or how much spin, or how much force the air is turning in the bore. And we can get, it gives us information. Now, is it the most powerful piece of information? No. The reason why I actually even got this was because of the LS heads. When it, if you watch some of my previous videos about the LS, um, the internet ports heads, it was over an LS3 head. And yes, there's another one coming, it's just gonna be further down the road. But what I was seeing was some weird things happening with flow would back up. And the curious part was, I was trying to see if maybe the swirl had something that would show what happened with it. And then oddly enough, a few videos ago I did what not to do part two with head porting. And I used that um, Flowtech LS3 head. And if you watch that video, it had no swirl to about 700 valve lifts or seven tenths of an inch valve lift. And then it started really swirling and it changed directions. So it went from moving in clockwise. So the air was going this way. And then all of a sudden at 700, it switched the other way and fast. So it did tell me that there's something else that might be happening with inside that port. In other words, it gave me information. What I did with that information, that's the most important part. So anyway, that's what Swirl is. Now the question they got asked a bunch, and I told you I'd do a video on it, hence this one. Uh, 
why is it important or what should I do? Is there too much? Is there too little? Well, it's nothing's absolute. In any part of this head, nothing's absolute. You can't say this is for everything. What we can say, I, I know for sure, is you, in general, um, swirl is kind of a weird deal, as in um, the more swirl it has, you could think of it, the more port energy is lost. And like, what? Think of it like this. If you were to go down a set of stairs and they were straight, you could go down the straight stairs very quickly. Now try going down the same set of stairs except for in a spiral staircase. You're gonna lose energy through the turn every time. So in an NA application, there's only so much port energy that's going into this port uh, because of the overlap of the cam. That's usually what draws that we have a certain amount of wave energy that comes in on the NA deal. So that's all the energy we have. So if you're making a port swirl or turn, you're losing that some of that energy. Some of that energy is going to be lost to make the turn. Um, and we've only got so much to use. So if you look at it like that, well then you, wouldn't you want no swirl? Well, remember, like I said, everything affects something else. Yes, it takes energy to make swirl, but swirl does something else. In general, if it's swirling more, it should help atomize the fuel better in the chamber and it should burn more and it burn better and if it burns better, it should make more power. So as you can tell, it's kind of a fine line though, because you're like, you do need swirl to better atomize the fuel, and then you need more wave energy so that you get more air in there. You get where both kind of tie in together and they both kind of almost, there's a spot where they're gonna be, in, and it's probably application independent for each one, where one's gonna be more important than the other, and you're gonna find that balance where it is where it is. Now, what's probably gonna get asked though is what about fuel injection versus carburetor? Now, I actually got a huge um, argument on one of the viewers, I should say, I don't know what he was, but um, about the carburetor versus fuel injection. When a properly designed carburetor, when the fuel leaves that booster, it is better atomized than the injector spraying out, period. Um, there's been many other people that have said that too. I remember that's my opinion, you're welcome to your own. But I've, I've seen it, because if you ever want to witness it, I could, when they, the sniper was on the uh, S10 here and at idle, Look down in there and see it spraying fuel. Now look in a carburetor when it's running at idle. You won't even see it. And in a good carburetor that's running, you barely see it. It leaves atomized. The problem with the carburetor though, and this is different from fuel injection, is it might leave the booster atomized, but it might not get to the cylinder atomized. Because as that air and fuels all together, any turn it makes or abrupt change causes the air and fuel to fall out. And then you have liquid now it's not longer atomized falling into the port and the idea is to keep it re-atomized with swirl now fuel injection you're like well it's not a big deal remember it's spraying a mist and there's a reason why they usually have the injector pointed at the back of the valve it's spraying fuel so it's not it might be a mist but it's not a vapor like would come out of a carp so that mist the reason why they spray at the back of the valve is supposed to be the spot where it has the most velocity and if you spray it there once it hits that higher velocity, it should atomize it. So because of that, there could be design things that would say, well, and if you look at the LS head, it kind of shows that. It sprays at the back of the valve. Um, it gets atomized, hopefully, because it's hitting that. It doesn't need as much swirl. But that's the reason why those don't really have that much swirl there. Um, now, for a carburetor deal, if left atomized, turned, like say for instance, single plane, left atomized, hits the floor, not, now it's lost some, uh, makes another turn into here because it's a single plane, it's coming out of suspension, makes more turns, goes into the port. It doesn't, it still has that valve to help, you know, right? It's gonna leave where the throat is and it's gonna try to be re-atomized, but the swirl kind of helps it more. Now it's not to say though, that some of the um, fuel injection stuff wouldn't respond maybe to more um, swirl as well. Remember this is kind of speculation stuff because really what you need is, dyno testing to see because if you look at like direct injection that's where you have a think of where the spark plug is almost but not really on the other side they have spraying and fuel into the cylinder well it's still spraying at a very high pressure and it's hoped that it would uh, be atomized but it doesn't so instead they have to have swirl to get that going now Darren was actually talking to PRI when he was talking about one of the uh, things with swirl is you can have too much swirl, and what happens was, he was talking about a diesel, I believe, where they had so much swirl that it was um, actually washing the cylinder walls, because if you think about it, you got a lot of spin, and you put fuel with it, some of the fuel is kind of a cleaning agent, 
and it's cleaning the, you know, the cylinder itself, and you've got problems with, you know, it's washing that cylinder down. And also could spin it out of suspension because it's going too fast or it's in the wrong spot. You get the idea? So the point being is it's a really fine line. Uh, there is no absolute answer. So even though I show you the swirl on it, because mostly got in my own curiosity, there is not going to be where, let's say this one's 3,500 RPM and this one makes great power. If you put it, say, in a big block and it turns 3,500 RPM or a Ford or whatever else, and you had the same RPM from the swirl, it may not be as good. Matter of fact, it might even be worse because it's application dependent. So there's no direct answer to it. That's what I'm trying to say. Which is like, man, I watched this video just for you to tell me that. Yes, because I do want you to understand there's more factors that affect this than, than just one little thing. It's a bunch of factors. So um, anyway, that's about all I could really speak to on the swirl part, except for as time goes by, you'll probably see more stuff and I'll probably get a better understanding. The biggest thing, if you want to be good with cylinder heads itself, um, take every bit of information you can find, whatever it is, that from flowing it itself from this point, all your measurements throughout the port, this gives you more information and take every piece of information you could possibly get and then try to figure out what made one head better than the other and look at all that data and figure out why it might be that way. That's what I tried doing. So even the, and by the way, the tricky part is it might be great for one head, but then another head that's got a slightly different architecture or different even chamber design um, might change the way that factors come into play. For instance, this one right here is an IK, Brodick's IK head. Well, its chamber is dramatically different than my Dragon Slayer. Oddly enough, this actually had more swirl by about 100 RPM, which I wouldn't think was possible because if you look at the chamber of the Dragon Slayer, it actually curves around. And I didn't think it'd be that way. Now, if you look at an AFR um, head, its chamber is even more different. I haven't put up on the bench yet to see what those do. The curiosity part of me wants to know if the swirl is going to make a bigger difference in power because of that. Also, the veins in the port. So this one doesn't have a vein. These are IKs don't. But the Dragon Slayer has a straight vein that comes off the valve. You, I probably, if you look at it in the old videos, you'll see it. It comes straight off the valve towards the chamber. The AF, AFRs usually have the vein facing like an ALS head would in the weird direction. And I'm curious to see how that affects it. So maybe it might slow down swirl, give you more port energy, but then you better deal with atomization as well. So uh, it's probably a really complex thing and I probably didn't do the greatest job of explaining, but I wanted to give you some information because I thought you deserved it. So again, I'm gonna reiterate this because I, I'm just gonna go ahead and, I just don't wanna deal with it. These are my opinions, you're welcome to your own. I'm just giving you as much information as possible. And uh, as time goes on, you'll probably see more information about it. Don't take my word as God or gospel, I'm not. Um, make your own opinions from everything you've learned. And uh, I wanna say, uh, appreciate all of you guys for watching. If you, this is all you care about with Swirl, you can go ahead and stop the video now because I got other stuff. I just dropped some stuff. I want to show you this. After I move my stuff. Ta-da! This is the slider plate. This is what this plate right here is. This is the slider plate for a new Gen, Gen whatever four Hemi. For the other words, the Chrysler Hemis. I now have the flow plate, and this is a 4100 bore. I actually have the bore sleeve too that came that I bought with this. So now I have them in stock. So I have it, I'm not in stock. I mean, I have it where I can use it. So if you have a Hemi head and you would like to see how much it flows, I now have the capability to do that. Um, I'm hoping I can get some, like a bear casting or something and try to do some port work and get to do some work with that. So that I'm pretty, pretty excited about. It finally came in, ordered in November. I also got one more. This one, and by the way, $430, $430. This one is for a Ford FE. You know how many Ford FEs I've ever done or ever came in the shop? Zero. So you might say, why'd you do it? Just because out of curiosity. Now, if you want your head in Ford FE float, I can do that. It's a 4310 bore. Um, I'll be happy to do that. I probably am not gonna do any port work on my Ford FEs yet. I just don't have enough time to get into the development of them because I think it's gonna be far more involved than I think. The Gen 3 or Gen 4 Hemi, whatever. I'm probably saying it wrong too, anyway. The Gen whatever Hemi it is. The newer Hemi stuff, I'm, I've said it wrong. 
That one I do, because I do what I think that market's probably going to explode. Because um, there's so many more Hemi's I think that are out there and, than the, even the LS's, because they put those Hemi's in everything. So on Chevy really only put them in trucks. Well, some cars, but not that many. But the Chrysler put the Hemi in just about everything. But anyway, so these have come in. So if you got a head you want to get flowed or for me to evaluate, I can do that. And last thing, I got to, and this is a restaurant recommendation thing that I haven't done in a long time. You'd have to go back to videos probably a couple of uh, months, but I actually got to go out to eat this weekend. I went to a place in Tulsa called Brother Hooligans. I love that place. I got the catfish, love the catfish. It's delicious. Um, this time it tastes a little gamey. I think they got some like really wild catfish or something, but uh, I, I still liked it. I, I like catfish, I like fried catfish is good, but here's the best part. They give you green beans, that's all you can eat. So it's like a family style green beans. And they have mashed potatoes and the shirt says, eat more gravy, and then you put gravy with everything. Love the place. And here's the best part. Now, I don't endorse alcohol at all. Hardly. It doesn't, not for what you're thinking. I'm not, I, probably saying that wrong, but I, I don't drink that often. The reason why is because I absolutely refuse to drink and drive. So if I even have one beer, I won't drive. So the problem with having any type of drink though is I gotta get my wife or someone to drive me to place or drive back from place, even if I have one beer, it's just a me thing. So I rarely drink. I mean, like once every six months if I'm lucky. Um, anyway, one of my favorite drinks is the Irish Car Bomb. And uh, they have it at Brother Hooligans. Oh man, I love that thing. Yeah, it's good stuff. But anyway, so that's there. So I wanna give a restaurant recommendation. If you're ever in Tulsa area, Brother Hooligans is um, 48th in Yale. Oh, it's some good stuff. I love that place. And also, as soon as I get out of it, there's Andy's, it's a frozen custard place. It's right right across the street. And I get my frozen custard. Yeah, I felt like a fatty. My poor son, he's been doing swim. He won't have any sugar at all. He's watching me eating ice cream. Is it a little cruel? Yeah, it's part of being a parent. Anyway, thanks for watching till the end of the video. I hope you got something out of it. If you got a gin, whatever, hand me head, the newer version, send it in and uh, I can flow it, same with the Ford FE. Um, thanks for sticking around for the video. You guys take care.